What's up guys, Sarah and Brad's room here for another video and today I'm here with my wife, Bruna. Lately on my channel we've been doing some Nogi stuff. I filmed two videos on some passing. It's like a mini passing system, more or less. It's more of a passing position that you guys can utilize a lot in Nogi. Today I have a uh, subscriber question or viewer question, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. But somebody was asking me about playing De La Hiva no Gi and I thought it would be a good topic for a video because the De La Hiva guard is one of the most prevalent guards in the Gi but it's not utilized as much without the Gi and there's a couple reasons for that that I want to discuss in this video. But I also want to discuss some ways that you can really really utilize the De La Hiva. So this is more of a De La Hiva concepts video than it is techniques but we're going to go over a bunch of different techniques. So without further ado I will shut up and let's get into it. So, stand up. So, uh, so why is the De La Hiva not as popular in no gi? Or why is it not as effective is what some people have asked. It's because you lack the upper body control necessary to sweep your opponent and to control them, right? Let's think about the mechanics of the gi, right? She's here, she's probably a little bit squatted. I have the De La Hiva and I can control the collar, right? I can control the collar and I can break her upper body posture down. But let's look at no gi. How can I break her posture down? I can't hold her head, right? That's not going to happen. The only element of control on her upper body that I'm going to have is her wrist. And there's only so much I can do with a wrist grip or a hand grip or an elbow grip, right? Because she's going to be able to pull back naturally. So is, is the De La Hiva even worth doing without the Gi? And my answer to that is yes. So that was the question. Would you play De La Hiva no Gi? And this is my crazy extended answer. Yes. Why? The De La Hiva is one of the easiest guards to apply because it presents itself often. So what do I mean by presents itself often? If we're here sparring, right, and Brina shoves me back and steps in with her lead leg, boom, I can get the De La Hiva, and I don't need upper body control, and I can slow down her movement. Furthermore, I can start to grab her ankle with either the ankle lock grip or just the ankle, uh, the cup on the ankle, and I have this control. But the De La Hiva game is completely different no gi, because a lot of the sweeps that we're going to be doing is going to be looking for one, to get to another guard, and two, to do sit-up sweeps. So from my personal experience, anytime I play De La Hiva without the Gi, I'm trying to get to single leg X or do a sit-up sweep. So typically I control the wrist just to slow them down, right? And then I start to extend them as I sit up, okay? Once I extend as I sit up, I pummel the left leg in, and I start to shoot through for the single leg X position. That's my favorite thing to do from De La Hiva, no Gi. Let's move back a little. Because single leg X is just such a stronger guard, the mechanics of the position don't change in no Gi, right? At least for me, they don't. The way that I play my style. And from single leg X, I can go to modified single leg X. Whereas De La Hiva, we're looking at a huge change because of the lack of upper body control. So stand up one more time. So we're here, she shoved me. I got the De La Hiva right away. Even if I couldn't get her wrist, I extend with the right leg. I do a sit up, right? Boom, and now I pummel the leg. If I want, I can go shin to shin, and I can start attacking my shin to shin positions, so I can pull single leg X. So here I'm gonna pull single leg X. Boom. Stand. <laughs> Stand. <laughs> I, said, I said what I was gonna do too. You're gonna have to cut that out. I'm sorry, I fell, I don't know what just happened. I wasn't paying attention. Should I redo the whole thing, or? No, you can just clip it off. Okay. So here, so here, even if I can't control the hand, I'm going to sit up as I extend her anyways, okay? And now maybe this time I pummel and I just go shin to shin, right? And from the shin to shin position, I pull single leg X, right? So I'm here and I pull single leg X and now I get into a strong position. So these are a lot of the options that we have from the De La Hiva position. Another option that we might have is she pushes us, she rushes us, we get control, and now look what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm just gonna do sit-up sweeps, right? So I extend her, hug the leg, come in here, and I start to sit up. And now I'm in single leg positions. Single leg and no gi, it's just like in wrestling, it's a great takedown, we can run the pipe, right? We can control the outside collar tie, we can come back in and shoot for the double leg. There's a bunch of different variations of single leg finishes, that's not what this video is about. So. Like I said, when she shoves us back, we get the control. We come here, we sit up, and we start to attack the single leg. And there's a bunch of different things that we can do. So that's my take on the De La Hiva without the Gi. I like to go to the single leg X. 
I like to sit up into single leg sweeps and that's as crazy as it sounds, it's not that broad, that's the vast majority of what I'm trying to do. Yes, there are inverted techniques that I like to do depending on my opponent's reaction. If they start to knee cut, I love reverse daily heva without the gi. And if you guys want to see a video on reverse daily heva without the gi, I will be happy to make it. Just let me know in the comments. But anyways, guys, this is more of an overview um, in response to a question that I received. And I hope it helps you out, guys. I hope it gives you a roadmap to how you can utilize this tool without the gi, even though it does change more so than other guards. Um, it's obviously not as bad as like worm guard or spider guard. Those are just non-existent without the gi. But I've always tried to build a game that doesn't really change. That's why I love single leg X, butterfly, half butterfly, modified single leg X. Those are all things I love. And then my passing game is very similar. The leg drags, X passes, those are two of my favorite things I'm always trying to look for. So I encourage you to build a game that translates easier from one to the other. So guys, if you like this content, you know what to do. Like and subscribe, please guys. And hit that little notification bell to help me grow this channel. Get notified when I make new videos. And if you have any questions or you want any uh, any videos in the future, let me know in the comments below. Sorry guys, my brain's giving out on me. It's been a long day. But you guys rock as usual. Oh, guys.